If you spend your time looking for solar charge controllers on eBay like I often do, you'll definitely have seen this solar charge controller. It's sold as an Anself and uh, it comes in various different models. And as you can see from this lovely feedback, I've already bought this. And the reason why I bought this is in the description because it's just a PWM solar charge controller. It has an LCD screen on it. But the interesting part for me, other than the fact that this one is set up for lithium iron, but also it's available in different models. And I was interested in the lithium iron model. And this is for 3S packs. And as you can see, its rated voltage is 12.6, 4.2 volts times 3, perfect. But it interestingly says stop charge voltage is 12.6 and low voltage recovery 11.1 .1. now the last time we looked at a PWM solar charge controller that came in various models for various different chemistry batteries it was this one and this is the lithium ion version and it's for a 2S pack there 7.4 volts and uh, we noticed that it trickle charged the batteries once they got up to uh, 8.4 volts their highest voltage there was a trickle charge and I said I'm not happy with having my lithium iron batteries trickle charged and generally I think people agree with that um, it can cause plating inside the cell so it's generally seen as not a good thing to do so I wondered whether this one would be different so the solar charge controller has arrived and it comes in a fairly Bog standard box, PWM charge mode, um, says suitable for all 12, 24 DC lamps. Now, of course, this is a generic box, but on the end, it does say it's the LI310 version, lithium iron, three cells, 10 amp. Uh, so hopefully the right one's on the inside as well. And inside, there is a manual and the item itself which comes in this plastic bag and it's a fairly typical lithium iron solar charge controller so along with the screen here there are two usb ports on here which i believe can deliver up to two amps across the two ports so one amp each or two amps on one i'm guessing there are three buttons and we'll guess we'll find out what they do in a minute that one looks like it turns on and off the load there's also a positive and negative symbol on those two. And that one, I've no idea at the moment. And on the back, it's a typical bit of metal to uh, use as a heatsink. So presumably the MOSFETs are pressed up against that. So uh, let's open it up and find out. So there we are. Look, this was made in May, apparently, or designed in May for what looked to be MOSFETs there. Unless... Any of them are a 5 volt regulator perhaps for the uh, USB ports, but MOSFETs for switching the load and the solar, so it all looks fairly standard at the moment. And on the inside it seems pretty self-explanatory really, there's the uh, three buttons there, you can see the legs that haven't been cut off uh, of the MOSFETs there, if I just lift that up. Um, the USB ports... The usual connection, some protection on the input. There's also a thermistor of some description for device protection, probably more than battery charging compensation. There's an inductor over here for that 5 volt regulator, so it does look like it's a proper book regulator. And under there, under the LCD screen, there is the microcontroller that's controlling everything, and I'm afraid. I don't think you'll be able to see it. It is a microchip PIC 16F 1948. Yes, 1948. And I'm not sure that's the year it was made. So again, on the previous version of uh, solar charge controllers that I found with a PIC microcontroller, this one is probably a completely standard model for somewhere around the 12 volts, even 24 volt battery systems. But using that pick, they can change the code on there and change it for different battery chemistries. But what we found on this pick 
was it was still allowed to float charge what will be programmed into this new PIC solar charge controller, the uh, CMTD. So we'll see what happens when we plug it in. I have a 3S pack here of reclaimed 18650s. And if I plug that in, everything moves. And we can see we've got 12 volts claimed on here, and that's pretty accurate. It's my port power saying extremely similar. Uh, there's no solar coming in, but uh, it's a grey day, but I'll turn the solar on now. Um, what are we looking at? Yep, that battery's creeping up. Nearly 300 milliamps going into those cells currently. And the load apparently is on as well, so I might just turn that off. I guess what we need to find out is whether that USB port remains on all the time. No, it just goes on with the load so we will disconnect that to make sure we're not wasting any energy there. So like I said what I'm interested in finding out is when this gets to 12.6 what happens to the batteries? Do we trickle charge or does that charge completely cut off? So while we're waiting for those batteries to charge up I'm going to get my little oscilloscope out and we'll see what's happening. So we can see now we've got up to 12.5 volts, nearly 12.6 volts here, and uh, we are doing pulse width modulation now. And uh, so I'm interested to find out that once this current reduces, ramps down, once the batteries get quite full, will we get to a point where this pulse width is completely off, 100% off, and uh, we're not trickle charging the batteries. So we'll leave this running a little while. I'm only getting seven watts, unfortunately, today out of a 50 watt solar panel. It's an overcast day, sadly, but we are seeing some interesting results so far. So while we're waiting for that current to uh, reduce down, what happens here with these buttons? What's on the menu? So showing voltage, now it's showing temperature, 16 degrees, uh, might well be. This says we're getting 300 milliamps from our panel here. Um, well, I'm seeing a bit more than that, so uh, perhaps that's a bit under. Uh, we can see the load current, and of course we've got no current going through it at the moment, because there's nothing being pulled. Uh, PV off. Now this again, the photovoltaic needs to be cut off at 12.6 volts, so we'll see if that's true. Load on, so the load can be on from 11.1 .1 volts and load off at 9 volts, 3 volts per cell. I guess that's fairly typical. Um, and there's an hour marker there, which is at zero, so I'm not sure about that. And uh, back to the voltage. Now, what else I noticed there was that hour, you get a spanner. And what do we do? Press and hold? No. I don't know what the spanner's about. Doesn't seem to do anything. So we can see the uh, current there is reducing. I've got just 100 milliamps there or thereabouts at the moment. The pulse width seems a bit more erratic. Um, so it is reducing that current. It does seem to be in a constant voltage charging mode here with 12.6 as its maximum. And it seems to be doing quite a good job. It was a little bit over 12.6 earlier, but only a fraction. So that current's got down to just 70 milliamps there, and uh, the pulse width is pretty slim now, still at 12.6 volts, and uh, it's been connected for an hour and 21 minutes. So um, those batteries are pretty much fully charged now, uh, and now we need to find out if in the next 20, 30 minutes, this pulse width completely switches off. So we're up to nearly two hours now. Uh, yeah, one hour 48 
minutes this has been connected uh, 44 milliamps still going into my batteries and we can see that on the left the pulse width is still fairly small but pretty much uh, still there sustained at about 10% duty cycle perhaps a little bit less so unfortunately it's a bit of a shame it does look as if this is float charging some people may call it a maintenance charge but it's keeping these batteries at 12.6 just over actually and it's keeping them there and it's still putting current in for a sustained period of time it doesn't seem to be quitting at either 10 percent of the initial current or even after almost a couple of hours it does seem to just trickle charge those batteries constantly and that's a real shame because this could have been a decent solar charge controller for lithium but actually as it happens I'm having better luck using a lead acid solar charge controller with my lithium batteries because I can avoid going into float mode and if you're interested in that experiment I'll put a link up above so that's the Anself uh, CMTD LI310 solar charge controller I think I've given it a good chance to prove its worth. I've given it some decent lithium cells, I've given it a couple of hours, but unfortunately I think it's trickle charging those cells and that's not for me. I don't like to trickle charge my lithium iron cells. In its lead acid guise, it probably works quite well. It will uh, go to a float voltage, it will raise the voltage of the battery up to float and keep it there as long as there's solar power and that's fine for lead acid but not so great in my opinion for lithium iron. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have please give me a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you can and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.